Stop using the bounce mix function inside of Pro Tools. Today I'm going to show you a much better way to get your mixes out of Pro Tools. Let's dive in. So here I am in my session and I'm at the end of this mix and I'm getting ready to print mix one. So what do we typically do? We go up here to file and we go to bounce mix, right? Wrong. That's exactly what we don't want to do. I'm going to teach you a much better way today of how to get your mixes out of Pro Tools. And it's so much better in so many ways. And it's the way every professional I know does it. I don't know any professionals using Bounce to Mix for final mixes, final masters. So I'm going to show you how I do it. And it's, it's really not hard. And it's much, much better, especially after you get used to this. You'll never go back to using bounce to bounce mix for final mixes or final masters ever again. Okay, so you can see I have been using the master fader here to the right of the screen. Um, and I've been using that to monitor the mix, but now I'm getting ready to print my mix. So I'm going to print the mix inside of Pro Tools, and there's so many benefits of doing this. And um, I'm going to show you what those benefits are as we go along. But how you're going to print your mix is first you want to do this. You want to go to all your tracks that are being routed to the master bus, which you can go up here and see that it's set to monitors. Yours might be set to speakers, might be set to monitor left and right. But whatever it's routed to, the master bus, that is where the tracks are sending out to. And so I want to look at every single track that's being sent to the monitors bus, and I'm going to highlight those tracks. So I'm going to click here on drums. Now what you can do on uh, Mac is you can hold down command. I think same thing on, on PC. And I'm going to just highlight every track. Now some of my tracks are subgroups, so I'm not going to highlight the subgroup tracks, but just the main groups that are feeding the master bus, I'm going to highlight every track. So drums, verb two, see these ones are all feeding the drum bus. So come over here, my bass tracks. So every track, I'm just going to go through my session, every track that's being routed to monitors, I'm going to highlight. So now I've got all my tracks that are being routed to the master fader. And what I'm going to do is hold down shift, option or shift alt I think on a PC um, and then you're going to click on one of those tracks you highlighted while holding down shift option and I'm going to go down here to bus and I'm going to switch all those to my mix bus routing. Now obviously you can route it to any bus stereo bus that you want um, but my recommendation is go to your setup and go into your IO and go to your bus tab and name one of your buses mix bus like I've done here. And so now I know that this is the one I want to use to send all my tracks, all my groups and all my tracks out to my mix bus. And this is going to be necessary for us to do a print inside of Pro Tools. And so now that I've sent my tracks out to mix bus, you can see I've routed all those to mix bus. Now I'm going to go over next to the master fader. And I'm going to create a new track, new stereo auxiliary track. So a stereo aux input. Now I'm going to name this mix. That's what I always name mine, MIX. So now here is my mix bus track. Now I'm going to set the input of that to mix bus. So I'm going down here to mix bus. And boom, now I've got, instead of all the tracks being routed to the master fader, they're all being routed to this mix bus. So I'm going to go ahead and delete master fader. So he's gone. And now at this stage, sometimes I've got some bus plugins on the master fader. And in that case, you can just slide them on over before you delete it. Just slide them on over to that mix track. So now all my tracks are feeding this mix bus. So now I can monitor through this uh, mix bus. I'll just play a little bit here. So all my tracks are going there now. So now if I want to print, this is the last step. Uh, really simple. I'm going to create another track next to the mix bus. And this is going to be a stereo audio track. So not an aux input this time, just an audio track. And I'm going to take the output of the mix bus. And I like to do, I've, I don't know why, I've just always done bus 19 and 20. And then I'm going to make the input of the audio track that I just created 
bus 1920 and arm your track and I'm going to switch you over to my mix screen and I'm going to go ahead and print the mix right onto this track. So here we go. Okay, so there's my printed track right inside of Pro Tools. Now the first thing I'm going to do is name this mix. I'm going to actually go to the beginning here, cut off the beginning, cut off the silence. Always leave just like, you know, maybe a quarter of a second before um, the audio starts. I found that's just a good practice. And um, so I'm going to say that that's it right there. So then I'm going to name this mix. So you can do Shift-Command-R to name it or you can right click and go to rename. So I'm gonna name this corporate future base and then I'm gonna do underscore mix one. So there's mix one. Now, why is this so much better than using the bounce, bounce mix function? Well, I'm gonna give you a few reasons. Number one, organizationally, this works so much better. So I'm going to actually go over here to this track, and it's named Audio 1 right now, but I'm going to name it Mix 1. Now check this out. I take Mix 1 home, and I decide, okay, I want to change a few things in the mix. So I come back the next day, and I can go New Playlist and name it Mix 2. Now I can print a whole new mix, Mix 2, and I've got my Mix 1 still saved inside of my session and I can reference it really easy and sometimes if you're like me you end up with four five six seven mixes even and this is a way that you can have them all organized in your session you can reference back to them really easily and I think that that is number one one of the main reasons that I want to print inside of Pro Tools is just organizationally, it works so much better. And if I want to reference old mixes, it works so much better. The next reason why I think this is so much better than Bounce Mix is, you know, the question has been raised, is there a quality difference of printing inside of Pro Tools versus the Bounce Mix function? And I don't think it's been proven that there is a quality difference, but it has been proven that there is a difference. There actually is a audible difference between when you use the bounce mix function and when you print inside of Pro Tools. And I personally have had problems using the bounce mix function where some of my plugins don't work correctly when I use the bounce mix function. I can tell you one plugin in particular is Waves One Knob Pumper. Um, I was having all kinds of problems with uh, when I would try to do bounce mix, it wouldn't print correctly. And then also there's been other times where I have had side chaining going and it's not worked correctly when I use bounce mix and it's worked perfectly when I print inside of the session. So by the way, I think the waves one knob pumper, I think they actually fixed that problem. I think enough people complained and they fixed it, but Never, nonetheless, there's definitely a chance, because I've experienced it, that some plugins may not work correctly when you use the bounce mix function. So that's another, for me, very important reason why I print inside of Pro Tools is to avoid any problems. And I want to be able to actually go and be able to see my audio. So I can go right now. I can look at uh, the audio. I can see everything looks good. Um, I do a lot of mastering. So I can just look at a master and see, oh man, maybe I printed a little too hot. Or I can look at a master and think, hey, maybe I can actually make it a little louder. Um, so it's good to actually be able to see your audio. When you use the bounce mix function, it just ships it out and you can't actually go and look at the audio form. So much, much better way. Now, do I ever use the bounce mix function? Yes, I actually do. I use it when I'm printing rough mixes that I want to print quickly um, to take home and listen to or to listen to in my car. Um, where I just want a quick mix and I don't want to wait to print something inside of Pro Tools. So I actually do use the bounce mix function for that. And I actually appreciate it 
um, for that because I remember uh, the days of Pro Tools where you actually couldn't do that. You had to do everything in real time. And so when they added that, I really appreciated it just to be able to get mixes out quickly, um, rough mixes, but I would never um, print a final mix using the bounce mix function. I always want to print inside the session. I can see exactly what the waveform looks like. It's just a better way to organize and I think it's just a better way all around. So there you have it. I hope you got some value out of this video and if you did, would you like this video and also subscribe to this channel. Turn on the bell for notifications so that you can be notified when my next videos come out. Thank you so much for watching and you can check out my other videos right here.